what about men of god the greatest prayer you can pray for a man of god is prayer for boldness and deliverance boldness and deliverance because that's what a man of god needs he needs boldness in the midst of persecution and temptation then he needs deliverance from those that are looking for how to stop him those are the two those are the best prayers you can pray for a man of god for him to have boldness to preach and that he be delivered from the traps of the enemy that's the best prayer you can pray for your pastor ephesians 6 19 supplication and for me that utterance may be given unto me that i may open my mouth how boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel a man of god needs boldness boldness the kind of thing i'm teaching if you don't have boldness you can't teach it so you can see that your prayers are working on me by generating me boldness and i don't care who you are and i don't care what you believe before when i engage you with boldness i make you doubt what you believe it's boldness you can know the truth but may not have the, the boldness to speak it is that true yeah somebody can intimidate you and you put it behind and say wait i don't want to die now but when you have boldness even in the midst of fire you will speak the truth because that prayer is an important prayer that's why paul said pray for me even though i have revelation but i need boldness to declare it that i may have utterance 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 you know what utterance is expression you know what utterance is eloquence you know what utterance is the ability to speak without doing kama kama when you open your mouth it's like a broken pipe things are coming arranged and people are wondering when did you sit down to arrange it like this it is the gift of utterance every preacher needs it if you don't have it you'll be making mistake and doing uh, 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 i'm sorry uh, this is not what i'm uh, like uh, okay i was trying oh, sorry sorry uh, wait first no no when a preacher is doing like that the people listening to you will lose confidence but when you have eloquence you have utterance and boldness you speak and the devil himself knows that what you have spoken he himself have to has to respect it so you pray for preachers to have boldness that's one prayer you pray for me all the time that god will clothe me with boldness somebody said but you're already bold it's not enough i need more i need more boldness say i hear you what did i say i need more boldness i need more boldness it takes boldness to to do certain things one of the gifts that the, the late archbishop in the had was boldness i don't know whether it's sania bacha's regime that they were trying to put a decree that christians should not do crusade they had actually they had even announced a decree or something and then the archbishop from america called all the pastors in lagos that there will be crusade by at the field by dodan barracks where the armies are gathered by their barracks that's where the crusade will happen and people came out in hundreds of thousands and assembled an archbishop preached. that's how that decree became water it takes boldness to dare certain things if you don't have boldness you can't so that's why you pray for preachers to have boldness that they may make known the mystery as they ought to colossians 4 2 to 3 continue in prayer continue where when you hear that what what prayer is that supplication continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving we are with all praying also for us that god will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of christ for which i am also in bonds a door of utterance that's another prayer for preachers a door of utterance could be invitations to preach in very relevant meetings invitations to access very influential platforms 
pulpits, conferences, churches, where people are gathered in millions, where one hour of your preaching can turn a nation right side up. That is a door of utterance. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Paul said, pray that we may have door of utterance. Pray that we may have boldness. And then he said, pray that we may be delivered. Delivered. Utterance, boldness, deliverance. You don't pray for a man of God and say, Father, open the eyes of my pastor's understanding. No, no. It is the pastor that prayed that prayer for you. His own prayer point is boldness. Another prayer point for your pastor is utterance. Another prayer point for your pastor is deliverance. That he be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. There are men that are very unreasonable. Very unreasonable. So you pray for him to be delivered. You are not binding the people, but you are praying deliverance. That if the people were supposed to confront him from a direction, there will be roadblocks. Your prayer will prepare roadblocks. Circumstances will be arranged to make them, they will be looking at him like this, but they cannot reach him. It's prayer. See, I hear you. Yesterday I told you when they killed James, the church was not praying. The church was having a pity party. They thought James, nobody can touch James. James is full of faith and power. Nobody can touch him. In their very eye, they carry James. In their very eye, they chop off his head, killed him. In their very eye, they were killing all their key men. When they now took Peter, the church said, no, we cannot see that time their eye opened to see that every man of God needs the prayer of the saints to be delivered. The Bible said the church went into prayer. They prayed without... Eh? What kind of prayer is that? Exactly. They prayed without ceasing until the angel went and brought Peter out. They were still praying even when Peter arrived. Because of the level of, of spiritual burden, agony, because of the pain of what has happened to other apostles, the pain was so much so when they got that momentum to pray it was a prayer they were not willing to stop so when before they went far in the prayer they now told them peter has come they said get out you don't know what you're talking about do you know what we are dealing with here and peter was standing at the door it shows you the level of agony with which they prayed it's not the kind of prayer you're praying and you're drinking juice the devil is a liar that's not the kind of prayer they will kill peter if you pray that kind of prayer it's prayer where even anybody inside the prayer group does not look like he's behaving you can land him a slap do you know what we're doing here that's what they did to that girl when the girl now came and said peter say get out of here do you know what i'm talking about they were not because of the intensity of interpret that was inside them listen to me i decree today by the power of the holy spirit you will change your world that amen is not good enough you will change your world you will change your generation your family will be glad you were born inside ah, your city will be happy you were born in that city somebody shout i'm a savior say i am a savior the word of God said God will raise saviors. God will raise what? Saviors. That wherever I am, disaster cannot strike. No, no, no. I will make power available, dynamic in his work. Somebody shout, I have the answer on my inside. I didn't hear your amen like thunder. That we be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. For all men have no faith. Hallelujah. That's why Paul speaking to Timothy says, God has not given to you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. He was telling Timothy, be bold. Wake up and be bold. Timothy, you can't be a man of God if you are a coward. Wake up and be bold. Paul was not charging Timothy. 
This ministry is not for cowards. Ministry is for brave men. Ministry is for bold men. And this boldness is not open eye. It's spiritual stamina. It's spiritual strength. If you do open eye, you will die like Stephen. It's not open eye. It's not looking for people's trouble. They will beat you and lock you up. It is that boldness that comes on you by the spirit where you say something, nobody can change it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Where you challenge somebody and he apologizes because there's something about you that cannot be explained. That's why it is a function of prayer. It's not a function of area boy operation. No, 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 no. It's not mafiarism. No, no. It's not mafiarism. This is spiritual oppression that comes by prayer. Again, but shaka. So you see why people fail? Because they don't make power available. Somebody said to me, Papa, under grace, I don't know why things are hard for me. <laughs> now I am answering your question. You're watching now. I'm explaining to you in the new testament why things are hard you are carrying the answer to making things easy but but you are not aware it's inside you you can change anything you can rearrange anything you can stop anything hey, yeah, 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 yeah. touch your neighbor say we are not hopeless touch somebody say we are not helpless every one of us is loaded with power to change our world can you lift your hand and shout i'm a world changer i'm changing my world through prayer i didn't hear your amen can i hear that amen like thunder second timothy chapter 2 verse 1 see what paul is telling timothy thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus be strong this thing is not for weaklings be strong in the grace that is in the lord jesus boldness is a prayer for ministers Romans 15 31 that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Uyo because there are those in Uyo that do not believe Paul's own was Judea my own is in Aquaibom that I be delivered from them that do not believe where in Aquaibom and that my service which I have for Nigeria may be accepted of the saints that even christians that are proponents of the law of moses that when they hear me they will have a a desire to want to hear me more because they like me that there will be such a likeness on my head even if you are moses junior brother when you hear me even if you don't agree with me you will like me enough to want to see how to find out why I am saying what I am saying. It's a function of this prayer. That what I have for the kingdom may be accepted of which people? Of the saints. The greatest devils a preacher can confront are Christians. The greatest enemy of a man of God are men of God. Satan is a small boy. Well, nobody is talking of Satan. Who dash at him? He fit in the canton. The enemies of the biggest enemies of a pastor are other men of God. Because when other men of God conspire against you, first of all, all of them command influence. Secondly, people believe them. So when a group of them say something about you, except God help you. So that's why when you pray for a man of God, you pray that other saints and other men of God by your prayer may accept him. Say I hear. Uh -huh. Then you also pray that saints, believers will accept him. When a man of God is acceptable by believers and men of God, he has a global platform that acceptance automatically gives that man of god a global platform he can stand anywhere and declare and people will help him spread the fame of what impact his ministry is having for that to happen 
is a function of prayer of the saints that's what paul is begging that you pray for me that i may be delivered from them that do not believe first of all then secondly that those that believe will accept my ministry 